G'day everyone, Matt Elder of Family Bricks here. In this video, we're going to review this custom LEGO UCS DeLorean time machine from the Back to the Future movies. This was put together from David Slater's instructions under license from Brick Vault and sourcing the pieces from our own collection and BrickLink. We will go over the features of this LEGO DeLorean, give a size comparison with other common LEGO cars available, look at the pieces to make the model and identify the expensive ones. We will review the model in terms of displayability, playability, value and build experience. We'll make some suggestions on how the DeLorean could be improved and answer the question, is it worth building and alternatives available? After this we'll take a detailed look at some of the specific features of the LEGO car before finishing off with a time lapse speed build with commentary. So strap yourself in, as where we're going we don't need any roads. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall, or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. So here we have the DeLorean and we'll just run through some of the features. You've of course got the classic iconic gulling doors which open. Give it up there and you can look inside and see all the different bits and pieces in terms of the time circuits in there. And coming around the back you've got the Mr. Fusion, just some details and profiling there and the other main thing which opens is the front bonnet um, it's nice and wedged in there so I can pop that up there and you can sort of see in there would be the space for your spare tire of course being a car it's got the what you expect in terms of the forward and back motion but it doesn't actually have any sort of steering and the reason for that is because the wheels themselves will enable you to flip out into sort of flying mode that you saw at the end of you know back to the future one but then a lot of in the second film that's got a really cool mechanism just to enable you to flip the wheels over pretty quickly like that and you know your swoosh ability you know looks really good so here just got it mounted up on a few transparent clear pieces which weren't part of the part list but just to go through and, and sort of see it from all sort of angles and it looks pretty cool and we'll quickly just check out the inside to see the detailing inside which is done really really well so you sort of see you know the steering wheel and all the bits and pieces there then the sort of center console and then the chairs nice little buildable ones there and then some of the flux capacitor and things in there as well later on i'll show you as it was being built because it's a bit clearer on how you can see things and get access to it and then if we quickly just spin around to the other side and have a quick little look what's on the inside there a bit better look at the time circuits and then you've got your mr fusion sort of up there done quite well and then just some other detailing on the side of the car here i just wanted to go through and give it a bit of a comparison with some other lego cars which are currently available so you can get a bit of a sense of how big it is here we have the door and compared to the tesla which is actually a re version of the mustang which would be roughly about the same sort of size because it's just using all the same bits and pieces click around the video to see like a review and a breakdown on that so lengthwise they're about the same there and then widthwise a little bit wider comparing it with dom's charger from the fast and the furious movies the charger is a little bit longer but then width wise the charger is probably just the same sort of width with these two however you can really notice the weight disparity because this is about eight nine hundred grams whereas this one here is almost a kilogram and a half like it feels like it is much more heavy than what it is and that's the thing with this this is being built really solidly so the weight is really there you can really feel that there is you know two thousand odd pieces there Comparing it with the 1989 Batmobile, however, it does feel a little bit small. The Batmobile is almost twice as long as what the DeLorean is. And then if you're looking at the widest parts there, the Batmobile is, what, one and a half times as wide at the, the fins? We'll go through and have a look at the parts I got from about 20 odd different BrickLink orders, look at some of the rarer pieces and some of the more expensive ones. So here are all the parts to build this DeLorean. There's about uh, 2,000 pieces here, of which I already have 1,500 in my collection, and then needed to brick link the last 500, which is really interesting because of the 1,500 that I had, that was about 100 pounds worth, and then of the last 500, that was about 250 pounds or 350 US dollars. There's probably a few extra parts in here because when I'm doing brick link, I try to order over what I actually need for some stuff because there's nothing worse than if you you know want 10 of something and then the seller turns around and then they only have nine or something like that. Then you've got to try to find the rest from somewhere else. 
I always find it interesting how some Brickling sellers send stuff. So this one here, it looks like they've somehow managed to vacuum seal all the pieces into their own individual slots. So these are the most expensive pieces which you need to get for the set. So within these about 20 pieces here, it's about 100 pounds or 130, 140 US dollars. So just quickly running through them, these blue shoulder mounts, they're about a pound. Each one of these little green unicorns, they're a pound. Uh, these flat silver, about a pound. These corner pieces here, they're about two pounds each. Um, they're about three pounds each. Each of these little hooks, about five pounds. Each of these uh, rims are about five pounds as well. And these are like secondhand use prices. Um, but one of the most expensive pieces is this right here, which is 40 pounds, about 50 US dollars. This is obviously going to be used for the windshield and it came in one set. I did look at just trying to get the set by itself off eBay or something like that, but unfortunately I could never get it for less than £40. You get it for about 40 45 That little hammer piece there too is also a couple of pounds, a couple of dollars. Normally these blue axle friction pins are about, you know, a pence or a cent each. Whereas to do it in black is about a dollar or a pound each. So then you need a couple of those. So hopefully they're going to be in some place that if you did see through it and you saw the blue, it'd be icky. Otherwise going to be paying that extra pound to have a piece that you won't actually see and doesn't make a difference. We'll soon find out. In terms of displayability, this model is fantastic for that because you can obviously have it in sort of hovering sort of mode here or flipping the wheels back up. You have it around the other way. I've really done a great job in capturing all the lines and getting the angles right. Like, you know, the iconic front part there and just getting the sloping pieces here and the way the gull wing doors work and the sloping um, windscreen as it goes through there and then just all the side little detailing and greebling which goes along and even just into you know this sort of back area here the mist diffusion just some really nice ways that they've got these vents or whatever they are in the story the rear lights and everything you know it just looks fantastic even the internals, the way that they have all the bits and pieces there. And okay, yeah, it doesn't have the glass there, but you've got sort of like that small little window opening that they've gone through and figured out and just having the way that you're getting the angles coming down the side of it. It's just really been well thought out and really well designed. In terms of playability, there is some degree of playability. This thing is really, really solid and widget, so you can, you know, swoosh it around pretty easily. And you've got the, obviously, you know, the opening doors. And if we come through and just and roll it through, it's going to be easy enough to create scenarios and have a bit of fun with it. The main thing you're going to be limited to is obviously the front wheels. They don't actually steer. There's no actual full-on steering mechanism because obviously they uh, the wheels will roll over so it can be converted into a hovering mode. I'm sure there's probably some genius bright spark out of there who could figure out a way to get it so it could do both, but I would imagine that's going to get pretty complicated and you don't have a great deal of space just to achieve that angle sloping down. There's a couple of pieces and things Things the way they hook together which is going to prove really challenging for that which probably means you probably aren't going to motorize it I mean you probably could because in the back there once you take this top section off there is a fair bit of space there which you could probably reconfigure but if you've only got it going forwards and backwards and not really able to turn it might not be really worthwhile doing that and as rigid as what the main body of it is you've still got a lot of these cables and pipings and tubes which if you just touch them in the wrong way particularly some here they can really pop off quite easily so whether or not you'd want to be you know manipulating that or small fingers might prove a little bit of a challenge and on the underside at the back here i don't know whether it's because the old piece that i had here if you just left this in by itself it kept on popping up with the slightest little bit of a nudge sort of gone through here is just added in this little uh one by one clip with a one by one stud there just to hold it in place and that's been there for the better part of a week now so now it's formed it up to the shape that it needs to be so you can probably get away with not having that clip but you know it's going to pop out pretty easily also with regards to playability obviously the gullwing doors come up and ideally you know they do stay open what I found when I first built this, however, one of them kept on falling down. And then when I saw other people doing reviews on it, they had much the same issue. And what I found is the solution to it is you have one of these one by three cross Technic pins which slide in there and then into the back end there goes a little hook piece. Now, what happens is the friction of that hook will hold it, the door open. And what I found is that if this is slightly malformed in here, then the doors will sort of start drooping and falling straight down. So what you need to do is make sure when you have this here, when it goes in there, to make sure that this is absolutely perfect. If it's not, then it'll fall down. The other thing too is when it's falling down, if you can't get that fixed, if you just push one of these chairs in slightly, 
uh, what happens is it creates a little bit of a blockage so you can at least get the doors to stay open that way if you don't have enough of these or struggle or just once you build it couldn't be bothered to try to address that issue value is an interesting one to have a bit of assessment about because while it looks great and they manage to get all the lines and everything to be able to achieve that it comes at a cost on the brick vault page where i got these instructions from it suggested brick link price might be 350 to 450 us dollars by the time i do the conversion it's at definitely over the higher end for what i paid for this this was getting close to 500 us dollars so it, it really is going to be something which is going to be hard to justify unless you're really into your deloreans don't get me wrong though it is a really solid build and it is quite weighty as well but to achieve that has come at a fair bit of a cost Plus could have optimized a few more of the piece usages like those black cross pieces they're actually hidden in behind there so for them to be black they don't really need to be black you could get away with them being blue and you know then there's two pounds or a couple of dollars already saved there i'm not really sure that you could really optimize it to any significant extent certainly on the underside and things like that some of these plates and things you might be able to do in light bluish grays or whatever ones that you have lying around but you can sort of see it starts to become a bit challenging as to making them sort of variable whereas if you want the whole thing and you know just looking as solid as possible from any sort of angle particularly I mean if you are going to be having it converted to the hover mode and it's up like that and the underside is a mixture of black and gray and whatever other plates you have available that might limit what you're doing with it the build experience on this too was also pretty good the instructions were quite Quite clear each side because it's mirrored you do have to build slightly differently like the way that you build this part of the door is different from the other side so you're very rarely getting that sort of thing you know here do this twice or do this four times or whatever like that and the instructions are pretty clear for the most part so which makes it quite good I think there was just over 600 steps over around about 300 pages of instructions so quite well done it will take you probably 10, 12, 14 hours, depending upon how you're going with it and obviously sorting parts and that sort of thing to begin with. If there were suggestions I'd make about this model and things that could be improved, I'd sort of say just as an additional optional thing, it would be nice just to have the hook from the first movie, maybe a little bit of an alternate detail before they had the Mr. Fusion there. And the other thing would have been for the front here, just because the way that's tiled out, I think you could have for the third film where they had that brown circuit piece that was there, which was part of the storyline. The other thing would just be making it a bit more clearer that uh, you'd need an additional 2x4 tile white one there for if you wanted to print out that out of time license plate. Would I recommend somebody going through and purchasing this and building it? I think it's going to come down to you really need to be hardcore into either Back to the Future or your cars or DeLoreans just because of the price of it is just so prohibitive. Don't get me wrong, I think if you can get past that, Dave Slade has done a fantastic job on this and it's really, really well done and you can't really fault it for what it is. Would I like to see the instructions a little bit cheaper? Yeah, but I guess it's also the sort of thing where, again, because it's so prohibitive, I don't think many people in relative terms, if this was, you know, a $100, 100 pound build, would be as accessible to it so certainly if you fall into that category of a hardcore back to the future fan or you like your deloreans or just your cars or something of this sort of size then definitely worthwhile checking out having said that though it literally as i was getting my last order for this from bricklink which was about 20 odd um, there seemed to be a rumor going around that later on this year in September, I think it is, they might be releasing this as an official Lego set. So if that does come to pass, it will mean that uh, this might become a little bit redundant, much in the same way that the 1989 Batmobile, which I think David Slater also designed when they released the official Lego version of that. Um, people obviously naturally gravitated towards the uh, Lego version because you could much more readily buy it although i do like his version of it because it then also goes into the bat missile the time circuits are a cool little fun build there and also to just checking out some of the interior details here it's very good the way that they've got the uh microphone sitting into a two by two jumper and then just some of the little details in there a cool little way that they've got the uh foot pedals as well so about a quarter of the way through the build and that is super rigid and it's really solid as well, so that's quite heavy, but there's some really nice detailing that's going on here. I thought I'd show you now rather than later when you can't see into any of this. Like the way that they've done the car here, just come off a, a tap type piece with a bit of a robot arm. And then also too, this is really cool the way they've got the pulley with the rubber around the outside and a few little studs in there. 
and the back there is starting to come up with the iconic detailing for the lights and things mostly layered sideways and that and that's been done really really well and the flux capacitor has been brilliantly done using those three little hooks in there plus those are the ends of lipstick stuck out with some yellow hand hooks on the end and that's really clever now I've got some more of the power interior in, so we've got the seats in, which are nice, really cool builds. And then the passenger divider, along with, i got no idea what that was called in the movie, but it's quite a really cool bit of detail and all the turns as it did in the film. Now I always appreciate really good design, and in terms of the way that these wheels are going to hook in and then be able to rotate over for when it goes into the hover mode, um, this is a great design and it's done with real simplicity. So I just thought I'd stop here for a moment and sort of show you how this sort of comes together. And here's the really clever part as well. To get some hook in friction, you're taking these little half pins onto a three bar and putting them into there. Because what happens when this sits on the side There's one of these little clips there. So you've got this three length bar in between these two little half clips, which fits and clips into that just right. The bottom axle piece here, the back of it, will go just into this hole here, like so. And then you hear this little click in there from where that hook is now clipped onto that three bar. So then that's when the wheels will be in normal mode. And then when it's flying, that will just pop out. The wheel's going to be on there, so that can just spin around a little bit and sort of sit however it needs to. And then when the wheel wants to go back to normal, spins around on there, clips into there, and the back are the same with that little three length bar and clips as well. Really, really elegant and smart design. Another really cool sort of design feature in this is that this whole front section here actually just slopes down ever so subtly. You can see here this is about two plates down, but then as you come up to here, it's about one plate down. Which initially, when you first start building it and you put this whole piece on, you're sort of just wondering, oh, have they done something wrong in there? Because it doesn't sit horizontally, it just subtles, subtly slopes down. You can sort of see there, it has design to do that where this angle in there is not 100% straight up and down. So there's lots of thought really being put into the design and well executed, and this whole section here is really solid. Now just going to run through a time-lapse speed build of how the car actually went together, and you can sort of see there you start off with the Technic base, and then you're actually building up with mostly plates to go through and make it really strong and really rigid, and you're going through adding in some of the floor, the grey, both in light and dark, you really get the sense that they've tried to make it so that it is going to stand up and it's going to hold up. They're just going through and building out some of the internal details and then that is the actual back sort of under part of the car as it comes up. Now was the interesting thing with this build is that you very much build it in sections so you started off doing you know the main bulk of the car and sort of the flat base of it and then now really working on the back section there and getting the rear headlight section set up and now sort of doing the part which will have the mist diffusion sitting on it and you can see the gap or the void it's about to sit on top of there so that was the only space i think within the whole model which didn't have really stuff wedged in in every which direction um going through and then doing a lot of these little angle pieces you're using a lot of little hinges in different places to angle things back in and it's been really cleverly done because you'll angle something back in but then there'll be a clip on the other side to hook onto it or really hold it in place so it's not going to move and just by adding in a couple of those little diagonal pieces at the back there it really fills out that sort of shape they're building up the center console and the seats as well going through the really sort of nice showing very much of that early 80s sort of era and now starting to actually build up the front section and you can sort of see that's done where it's on a bit of a slope and now building up where the spare tire would go and the front sort of headlight section there again putting in some more of the pieces just sort of angulating down on the sideway doing the doors now again even in doing some of the doors to get the angles you're using a lot of hinge pieces to get different movement in there 
The top part of the doors are made out of Technic beams, which just felt a little bit odd considering the rest of the car is brick built. Like I get it to get the angles to move, but then just having those Technic pieces in there just seemed a little bit incongruous with the rest of the model. A few more greebling bits and the fun part of any sort of car, putting on the wheels and away it goes. If you've enjoyed and or gotten something out of this video, then hit that thumbs up button and or consider subscribing. Is this a set you've built? And do you think you'd be interested in building this? Sound off in the comments below, or just leave the word Biff and we'll know that you've watched to the end of the video. What Lego movie car is best? Check out this video here. Otherwise, here is a review of that Lego Mustang to Tesla Cybertruck mentioned earlier. Or alternatively, here is the Mustang to Lego Porsche. However, this may be more of interest to you. Thanks for watching and that's this from us here at Family Bricks. Until next time, when we talk about all things Lego and lifestyle.